Hello and welcome back once again. It is time for the Golden Age of DC Comics 365 Days where I take this beloved hardcover coffee table book given to me about two decades ago by one of my best friends. It has been surfing my coffee table ever since and has been a source of constant inspiration for comic book shop style conversations the kind we used to have in the funny book bodegas on any given wednesday new release day <laughs> uh, the golden age of dc comics runs between 1938 to 1955 the Silver Age runs between 1956 and 1970, the Bronze Age between 1970 and 1985, and the Copper Age begins in 1985. I get these standards from the uh, latest edition of the Overstreet Price Guide, and it's Mighty Glossary. What a great source of comic book information. If you don't have one, pick one up. They're great. Uh, I use this book for its intended purpose. It's a 365 days book. I open up to today's date, which is August the 20th. I'm going to, we're going to sh look at some antediluvian comic book art. We're going to read the blurb and then we're going to talk about comic books. And we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. This is true. Alrighty. This is a 2004 Abrams Press publication written and curated by Les Daniels. Chip Kid and Jeff Spear. You can find the link to the Amazon page in the description where you can get your own coffee. It would look great on your coffee table. You can play along at home and you can get a great gift for a geek. I know. Well, cool. And also, I usually do something called the escapism caveat. I made its own dedicated video and um, it's going to be posted at the end of the show here. Uh, and uh, yeah, check it out. Like and subscribe. You know what I mean? Uh, smash that like button. Please let me know what you think about activism versus escapism. Am I making this up about cultural conquistadors? Or do I have a point? And if I have a point, perhaps it's good that I wear this hat to cover it up. Bah! That's a joke. Um, also, yeah, I'm like, suffering a little bit from con crud. And so, uh, yeah, my voice isn't all that there. So please, thank you very much. Um, and I apologize in advance. Um, let's get to it. All right, it's August the 20th. And this is art by Alex Toth, the amazing Alex Toth, grandfather of the Super Friends. This is true. Hello. That's Alex Toth's, you know, if not his handiwork, it's, uh, it was made by the Bible that he drew, right, huh? Uh, this is from Green Lantern number 36, January, February of 1949, in the waning days of the superhero books, they were about to be replaced with Western tales and horror comics and kids' comics, too. But, uh, splash, here we go. I did hear the splash of a body hitting the water. There it is, bound and gagged. But where is this thought bubble coming from? Who is thinking this? It's Streak the Wonder Dog, and that's his internal uh, narrative. We're, let's get to this, okay? Dog Daring Do is at its four-legged finest in this four-color adventure of Streak the Wonder Dog. By this stage of his career, the celebrated canine crime chaser has not only taken over the Green Lantern's comic book, but has become the master of the mutt monologue. Yeah, here we go. Spewing forth more solilo soliloquies than Shakespeare. And in his spare time, he saves people from drowning. And that's, uh, that's the, that streak, the Wonder Dog. Alex Toth would go on to, uh, make, um, Wonder Dog as part of the Super Friends, the teens that were the sidekicks, Wendy, Marvin, and, uh, Wonder Dog. And uh, then that evolved into Zan and Jaina, uh, the Wonder Twins, and their pet monkey, or familiar, Gleek. And, you know, just comic, silent, uh, it's, it's just part of the whole package of this, like, of archetypical humor. It really is. Um, and what other, I, I meant to pull this up, Streak the Wonder Dog, um, and that was from 1949. 
but dogs were huge in fiction, boys' fiction, or just fiction in general, I guess. Be water, my friend. Be water. That's Bruce Lee. I got this from the Bruce Lee store. Yeah, it was an upsell too at the end. Would you like a water bottle? You know, I do. Ah, let me wet my whistle, please. Two other huge dog um, stars at the time, animal stars, um, and stars of their books, movies, and television shows. Eventually, eventually television shows uh, were Rin Tin Tin and Lassie. Um, these are the two biggest ideas that I came up with when I was doing uh, my show notes. You know, show notes. Lassie, Rin Tin Tin. I make show notes. I. I, I use show notes. I do. I try to, at least. Uh, let's start with Rin Tin Tin. He was um, a male uh, German shepherd. And um, he actually, his, his, he lived between uh, September 1918 and he died August 10th of 1932. And he became an international star in motion pictures. He was rescued from a World War I battlefield by American soldier Lee Duncan. He was found in France, who named him Rinty. And Duncan trained Rin Tin Tin and obtained, and obtained silent film works for the dog. The Rin Tin Tin was an immediate box office success and went on to appear in 27 Hollywood films, gaining worldwide fame. Um, Rin Tin Tin died in 1932. The name was given to several related German Shepherd dogs featured in stories on film, radio, and in television. Rin Tin Tin Jr. appeared in some serialized films, but was not as talented as his father, Rin Tin Tin III, said to be Rin Tin Tin's grandson. <laughs> oh, the doggy family trees. Um, Rin Tin Tin IV, uh, he was used in the 50s television series, The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin. Uh, but, he, but this dog performed poorly in a screen test and was replaced in the show by um, an unrelated dog named Flame Jr. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like a mini soap opera in between. There was also Lassie. Lassie the Collie Dog. Lassie is a pretty old uh, intellectual property. Uh, Lassie is a fictional rough female collie dog and is featured in, the st in a short story by Eric Knight that was later expanded to the full length novel called Lassie Come Home, which is that's... I think the first Lassie movie, um, published in 1940, Knight's novel was filled by MGM in 1943 as Lassie Come Home, and um, then so, uh, by 1954, the not, the long running Emmy winning television series Lassie debuted, and that lasted for 19 seasons, 19 years. I grew up with this show in constant reruns, both of these shows, to be honest. But I watched a heck of a lot more Lassie than I ever did Rin Tin Tin. And, uh, but Lassie first appeared in an 1859 short story written by British writer Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, and that's the earliest description of Lassie the, the, the Rough Collie as a female collie with, an intellect, and with intelligent and apprehensive eyes who rescues two lost half-brothers who are dying in the snow. And um, it's like Lassie Saves the Day storyline that gets used for another 100 plus years. That's great. I mean, this is why I love doing this show. Uh, it makes me look up historical things about our fictional characters. These fictional characters have been around for a little while, haven't they? And I think Streak the Wonder Dog most definitely fits in with his, uh, you know, his... Is Kennel Pals, perhaps? Rin Tin Tin and Lassie. They're of the same age and of the same cut. And uh, yeah, and we've been talking about comic books. And we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. So tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern. And we'll figure out who we're talking about when we turn the page tomorrow. Please like and subscribe. Ring that bell. Turn on the notifications. Make it rain. I would love to earn your subscription. I make daily content here. Um, we talk about comic books every day. Um, 
I talk about spirituality and gratitude a lot. I'm a professional chef and I talk about cooking a lot too. I do. I'm also known as the Sultan of Soup. I make soup shorts and uh, they're pretty appetizing. So check them out. There's a playlist called What's Cooking? And there's also a whole playlist of uh, the entire series of the Golden Age of DC Comics. Um, so check that out as well. I got something for everyone, hopefully. Well, God bless. Namaste. Good luck. And we will see you again tomorrow in the funny pages, okay? Ciao. Take care. Bye-bye.